Hello, my name is Kathy and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments. Continuing with muscle, bone, and joint ailments starting with the letters D and F. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my how to use homeopathic remedies video before using the material in this video. Now I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've bro broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then I'll move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system. Then I'll address the issues of your skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, bladder, then ailments specific to women, specific to men, then issues of the hormone metabolism, and after that I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations in the immune system, then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. Then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescence. And finally, special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it's recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies. And as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types. Those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character and personality and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature mirror people tend to be pear-shaped, have a dark complexion, be fitted, fastidious, and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets, and a propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings, and an account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitude towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let's continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with muscle, bone, and joint ailments, starting with the letter D and F. The body is a wonderful system of bony levers and casings bound together by ligaments and moved, supported, and protected by muscles. Where bones, and mo bones meet, there are joints. Most joints are enclosed in a sleeve or capsule of tough fibrous tissue lined with cells that secrete a special lubricant, the synovial fluid. The ends of the bones themselves are covered in a special kind of cartilage called hyaline cartilage, which is smooth and tough and nourished by the synovial fluid. The fluid and the smooth articulating surface of the bones ensure friction-free movement. The largest synovial fluids in the joints in the body occur in the shoulder, elbow, hip, knee, and between the pelvis and sacrum. There are other types of joints too, although these occur in lesser numbers. The weight-bearing surfaces of the vertebrae, for example, are separated by discs of fibrous cartilage with a tough outside and a softer inside. 
The vertebrae stack up on each other, separated by the shock-absorbing discs. The knee, because, of, because it is both load-bearing and free-movable, has a fluid-filled joint capsule with two partial discs of cartilage attached inside it. Where muscle tendons cross joints, there are special anti-fraying strictures called bursae, which are small fluid-filled sacs of connective tissue. There are bursae above and behind the knee, at the top of the femur and humerus, at the back and front of the elbow, and so on. The knee is unique in having a small shield of bone, the patella, in front of the joint. Without it, kneeling would be impossible, and the tendon of the quadricep at the front of the thigh would soon wear through or get nipped in the joint as the knee straightened. Every joint in the body has its own range of movement. The shoulder has the greatest, followed by the wrist, the head, and the neck, and the hip. Finally, healthy ligaments check joint movements, keeping it within stable limits. Healthy muscles, whose inelastic tendons insert into bone, close to the joints they move, also keep joints within stable limits. An extramobile joint, therefore, is not necessarily a healthy one. A hypermobile joint in the spine, for example, usually means that other vertebrae joints are not as mobile as they should be. If muscles are weak, giving little stability or protection to a joint, the task of stabilizing and protection falls entirely on the ligaments and the joint capsule itself. Unlike muscles, ligaments and joint capsules have no contractile powers. They can only stretch. With traumatic or habitual strain, the joint becomes inflamed, causing stiffness, pain, swelling, and loss of mobility. It may even dislocate, becoming useless, because the fulcrum against which the muscles exert the leverage has fallen apart. If trauma is sudden and severe, ligaments tear, tendons rupture or rip away from their bony moorings, muscle fibers break and bones fracture. However, most of the muscular aches and pains that take people to their doctor, osteopath, chiropractor, physiotherapist, or acupuncturist do not have such spectacular causes. They are a result of poor posture, depression, anxiety, occupational demands, lack of exercise, and the slow process of aging. Bone, contrary to popular conception, is one of the most active tissues in the body. It is well supplied with blood vessels and is continuously repairing and remodeling itself in response to stress and load. Exercise and sufficient calcium and vitamin D in the diet encourage growth, maintenance and repair. In fact, calcium is continually exchanged between the bones and the blood in order to keep sufficient calcium and in the blood for nerves and muscles to function properly. In an adult, the manufacture of blood components, red and white blood cells and platelets, is carried out in the marrow inside the vertebrae, breastbone, ribs, pelvis, and heads of the humerus and femur. Dislocations. Joints are held together by ligaments, but shearing blows or falls can knock their articulating surfaces apart, tearing or permanently overstretching the ligaments, damaging the joint capsule, and perhaps surrounding blood vessels and nerves as well. The joint may go back into place when first dislocated or have to be manipulated back, since the joint is permanently weakened, dislocation is likely to recur with an increased risk of osteoarthritis. Shoulders and jaws dislocate most easily. Dislocation of the vertebrae can cause spinal cord injury. If a joint is continually weak, dislocation may occur spontaneously without injury. Congenital dislocation of the hip is seen in about one in 60 newborn babies. Joints badly deformed by rheumatoid arthritis can also dislocate. If dislocation keeps recurring, surgery may be necessary to tighten ligaments or reconstruct joint socket, followed by physiotherapy. After first dislocation, the joint is immobilized for two to three weeks to follow weeks to allow tissues to heal. Subsequent dislocations are usually less painful. Specific remedy to be taken every four hours for up to three doses. To promote healing after a dislocation, use Ruta 
30C. Dupretayens contracture. This is a thickening and shrieking of the sheet of fibrous tissue under the skin of the palm, usually pulling the third and fourth fingers towards the palm. It may be hereditary, but mainly affects alcoholics, epileps, epileptics, and men over 40. It can be corrected by surgery and physiotherapy in the early stages. However, before consulting your doctor, try the remedies that follow. Specific remedies to be taken every 12 hours for up to two weeks. If the condition has come on recently, use Gelsemium 30C. If the condition is well established, use Thiocinamus 30C or Calcarea Floor 30C. Self-help, vitamin E is known to help this condition. Fibrocytis. Fibrocytis are small adhesions between individual muscle fiber, causing pain and stiffness. They are commonly caused by habitual strain due to occupation or po postural habits, by unaccustomed strain or by emotional tension. It is one of the commonest cause of back aches and will usually clear up in three to four days, provided muscles have not been torn. Specific remedies to be taken every three hours for up to two days. If the pain comes on suddenly in cold, dry weather and seems to be aggravated by movement and the person is restless and apprehensive, use Aconite 30C. If the muscles feel bruised as if from sleeping on a bed that is too hard and movement makes the pain worse with physical restlessness and irritability, use Arnica 30C. If the fibrocytis is in the neck, back and limbs and is made worse by movement and by dry cold wet winds and soothed by pressure, use Bryonia 30C. For aching tearing pains in the limb muscles with stiffness or weakness and the pain wears off in warm wet weather but gets worse and cold, use Causticum 6C. For pain and stiffness and having to get up in the middle of the night because of pain and feeling bad tempered as if nothing is going right, Use Chamomilla 6C. If affected muscles feel cold with, but pain and stiffness is relieved by cold applications, use Ledum 6C. If pain and stiffness is worse in damp weather, in cold dry weather, after exercise and around 4 a.m. and where turning over in bed hurts and pressure brings relief and feeling very irritable, use Nux 6C. If muscles are stiff after overuse and stiffness improves with gentle movement and there is restlessness, use Rust Tox 6C. Self-help. Take hot baths and apply hot and cold compresses alternatively to stimulate circulation. Soft tissue treatment from a massage therapy could also help. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.